My name is Robert Sharp, and I'm the lead AI engineer for Silicon Society. And today, what I'd like to do is demonstrate GPT-4 Turbo's new JSON mode. I think this is one of the really cool new features from OpenAI, and let's get to it. All right, so to start off, I have a, a new project here in PyCharm, and we have requirements, OpenAI, and python.env. I also have my API key stored in .env file. We're gonna leave that off screen for right now. And I have a little install script that just updates pip. It installs my requirements from the requirements file. That's all the code that I have defined so far. And we're gonna go ahead and run this and make sure that my environment is up to date. And sure enough, it is. So that's good. And let's let's start playing. So I'm gonna import OpenAI. As a matter of fact, the the syntax for the OpenAI Python library is a little bit different. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. So from OpenAI, import the new OpenAI class. All right, and we're gonna do we're gonna load dot env. So from dot env, import load dot env, and we'll go ahead and run that. That gets our environment variables in memory, and then we're gonna uh, instantiate our OpenAI client. And in here, I need to specify my API key, and I'm gonna use the OS get env in order to get that from my .env file. And in here, it's called OpenAI key. There we go. OpenAI API key, rather. All right, and what we're gonna do is do a chat completion. With the new syntax, it kind of looks like this. So I wanna do client.chat.completions.create, and then we're gonna give it the usual input that we would give the OpenAI chat completion, right? So we have a messages. And I'm just gonna set that to an empty list for right now. We'll come back and fill that out. And we need to specify the model, which is GPT-4-1106-1.0. This model is brand new. You may not have access to this preview version, but this is uh, GPT-4 Turbo Preview. And we're, we're playing with the JSON mode. So there's a couple of different things that we need to specify in order to turn on JSON mode. One of them is the response format. Okay, and we specify the response format like this. We say type is equal to JSON underscore object. Okay, that's one thing that we need to do. The other thing that we absolutely have to do is in the system prompt so we're going to define a system prompt here role system and then we need content and inside this content we need to specify that we want json as the output if we don't specify it in the system prompt uh, i believe it'll give us an error so what i want to do here is say please output valid JSON. Okay, and that's that's my entire system prompt for this. Okay, and then in the user prompt, we go role user content. In here, we're going to specify a little more details about what we want. We're going to come back to that though. I'm just going to leave some ellipses there so I remember to finish that out. One more thing that I want to specify here is I want to set the temperature pretty low. And the reason for this is because what I'm going to produce requires a little more creativity. And creativity should be in huge air quotes. It's not really creative, but I don't want to open that can of worms and I did already, so there you go. Then we need to unpack what we get back from OpenAI. And I just noticed a, a little flub here. What, what I'm gonna do is do this little guy right here so that we just get the very first thing. I'm only asking for one response and this code right here will just grab that. That's instead of doing something like choices index zero. I, I think code that has indexing like this is a little messy so I avoid it when I can. Then we want to grab the content 
from the chat completion dot messages dot content. Okay, and then I want to make sure that this reply is JSON compatible, right? So I'm going to do json.loads content and then I'm going to print out what we get. And I'm actually going to print out the content here. This this line is really just here to alert me if the JSON is, is not valid. So we'll go ahead and import JSON. All right, this looks pretty good so far. So what are we going to ask GPT to, to make for us? I'm going to specify a user prompt to ask it to build some characters for an imaginary RPG. And I think I think this domain is pretty good for playing with JSON because we have a complex data type potentially with lots of little details that have to be right. So let's see, create a character for an RPG and We'll just do that for right now, okay? We'll, we'll just give this very, very simple thing, and we'll go ahead and put that here so that our messages has that in it as the, the user prompt. Now, already, we should get valid JSON out, so let's go ahead and confirm that and run this. Of course, there's probably a, a bazillion people trying to access this all at the same time. So this might be a little slow and I made a typo. I did indeed mean message, not messages. So we'll fix that little typo and run this again. All right. So here we have our return object and it is valid JSON, which is fantastic, but it's not what I made this video to show you. I want to specify this object in a much more carefully and controlled manner, okay? So what I decided to do initially was to show the model an example, right? So what we could do is say, follow this example for the output, right? And we can define maybe name and we can say, okay, this is a, this is a string. And we can say, you know, class, and this is a string as well. And maybe we want level, which is obviously an int. And okay, that's good for right now. And this will work. We can go ahead and run this to make sure. And there we go. Okay, so it doesn't have all the extra stuff that it came up with on the first go around. And it just has what we asked for. Fantastic. But what if my RPG game doesn't have warriors? Maybe we only have fighters, wizards, and clerics in this simplified game. Well, what I realized that we can do is be a little bit more pedantic with our type specification. And that's a little foreshadowing. We'll come back to that in a minute. So, okay, so in class, what we can say is we want a literal Right? A string literal that is fighter, wizard, or cleric. Right? Those are the only options, and that's what this literal type represents. Okay, so if we run this again, it should be one of those three. Excellent, we got wizard. Let's run it again, and just to run it a few times here to make sure that it's not going to hallucinate some other class that we don't support. Aldor the Brave. Awesome. Okay. So what if we want to take this to the next level? Now, I played with a lot of different strategies for, for defining things like, you know, maybe we want to specify the damage types, right? And each character can have up to three damage types. How would we define something like that here? And what I found is that if you wanted to, you, you can do that, right? So damage types, and this is going to be a list of literal where we want to specify the exact damage types. And I'm going to copy and paste here because I'm lazy, but we can do something like that. 
But how can we say that we want up to, to you know, some number of those? And that's, that's where I kind of started writing pseudocode. And it kind of worked, but it wasn't really any better than doing a fine-tuned model on not enough data, right? The, the error rate was 5% or so, and it, it was okay, but it wasn't great. And then it dawned on me, what if we used Pydantic? Instead of giving it this object as, as the specification, what if we defined a Pydantic model in order to define exactly what we want. Pydantic is is what I use on APIs to validate incoming data already. And, you know, having those two systems speak the same language just seems so elegant. So that's what I did. And let's go ahead and see that. So instead of this, what I want to do is give it the Python code for defining a Pydantic base model or a derivative of base model that I mean, I can specify a range for the level. I can specify the number of items in this list with a minimum and a maximum. I can specify many different things about strings, about ints, about floats, right? I, I have ultimate control over the types in this thing. And I, I think this is really cool. And from my testing, this has... I, I, I hesitate to use 100% to qualify this, but I haven't seen it hallucinate yet. And I think that's really cool. The other thing that I did change here is, instead of calling it an example, I'm gonna tell it that we're dealing with Pydantic. So create a character for an RPG, follow this Pydantic specification for output. We have a full name, we have a profession, we have race, level, and damage types. And the damage types can be a, you know, between one and three. So let's let's run this and see what happens. And there we go. Run it again. And there we go. And I think this is really cool. And I hope you enjoy it as well. And I, I hope you use this strategy to define JSON output for GPT for Turbo. All right, so let's take this to the next level and ask for an entire party of characters in a list, right? And the output might be a little funky at first, but we'll we'll see what happens here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a copy and paste again because I'm super lazy. And we're gonna look at this. So what I have here is uh, okay, we have this variable in characters, create a balanced party of five characters for a fantasy RPG game. Characters levels should be between 10 and 15, even though I'm specifying that the range is between 1 and 20, what I want to have happen is that this specification overrides this specification, right? And and that's, that's exactly what it does. Not only that, but I can specify the party as its own type, which has a characters variable inside of it, or a characters field, which then contains this list of characters, right? So I have the character defined and I have this party object defined as well. So let's let's see what that looks like. And there we go. And notice that even though I, I chose some kind of odd races for this fantasy RPG, that it, it's adhering to exactly what I asked for. And the, the limitations that I placed on it are, are coming through perfectly. Anyway, I, I hope you like this strategy. I, I hope other people enjoy it and use it. And may all your data science turn out perfectly. We'll see you next time.